Hi, Cat's Cradle here. There was an interesting story on Drudge this morning. There was a link to Yahoo News Canada who had a story, Google Loses Appeal in Street View Privacy Case. I'll post the link for you below in the description box so that you can go check it out yourself. It begins, a federal appeals court rejected Google Inc.'s bid to dismiss a lawsuit accusing it of violating federal wiretap law when it accidentally collected emails and other personal data while building its popular Street View program. Now, many of you have probably uh, been to this website where you can go to googlemaps.com and you can click on Street View and, it, and you've probably even looked up your own house where uh, what has happened is a, a Google van or someone Google has hired uh, with a big photographic equipment mounted on top of this van drives down every street in a community and takes pictures of the front of your house. And some of these pictures on the internet are old. You may notice that maybe uh, occur, you, you might look uh, if, during the summer and it will show a picture of your house in winter or something like that. And they change them periodically. But they have people that do this full time. That's all they do is drive up and down every street uh, in cities uh, all over the world, in fact and take these uh, street images. Well, they were doing more than taking pictures. They were they had some sophisticated equipment that were, especially people that had Wi-Fi, uh, it was pulling information off of their systems. The Ninth U.S. District Court of Appeals refused to exempt Google from liability under the Federal Wiretap Act for having inadvertently intercepted emails, users' names, passwords, and other data from private Wi-Fi networks to create Street View which provides panoramic views of city streets. It's a landmark decision that affirms the privacy of electronic communications for wireless networks, says uh, Mark Roddenberg, who is Director of Electronic Privacy Information Center in Washington, D.C. Anyway, these guys collected all kind of information on you. Um, maybe not you, but, you know, some somebody around the country, they've got information. You know this is going on. Everybody, I mean, all these whistleblowers, that's what they're saying is that uh, the government and other entities are collecting information. You remember last year how uh, they were talking about the RFID chip and uh, they were talking about uh, these fancy systems that can read uh, your credit card numbers through your wallet as you're walking down the street. It all seems like science fiction and, and things that we uh, would laughingly joke about years ago, you know, as something that might be a possibility in the future, but it's real, and it's here, and it's happening, and you are vulnerable. Many of you will remember a video I made a while back where I showed you how I cut the tops off of my husband's and my daughter's socks, and I use those to put around my canned goods to protect them from uh, being bumped around and hit and that kind of thing. Well, there's also another use for socks. We have a camera mounted on top of our monitor at our computer station in our house and I have cut the toe off of the sock and covered that camera. There are look down capabilities that would allow uh, someone remotely to, without your knowledge and without the little light coming on, to be able to look down, uh, use your camera to look down and uh, see what's going on um, in and around your computer area of your house. So I just keep that little camera covered up with the toe of a sock. When I get ready to use the camera, I just take the little sock off and use it and then replace it. This sounds silly, guys, but uh, I'm not fooling around here. The other day, one of my husband's associates wanted to meet with him early in the morning before work because he had a little piece of intel for him. And my husband, husband met with him and got the information and uh, I was kind of eager to know what it was as well, and I called him uh, probably mid-morning and said, "Did you did you have your meeting?" And he said, "Yes." And I said, uh, "What did what did your friend have to say?" He said, "Oh, oh no." He said, uh, "I will talk to you about it when I get home." He wasn't about to talk to me over my home phone or even over a cell phone about the sensitive information. He wanted to do that in person with me at home, and we just are are not. Uh, I just don't think we can be too careful. So just be aware that uh, you're not even safe in your own home. And I know that sounds creepy, uh, but it just takes a little, a little bit of precaution 
uh, to be to be sure that your privacy is secure. And lots of times, uh, Paladin Prepper, my husband and I will go to talk about something sensitive and my daughter will point to the computer and, and the camera and suggest that we probably uh, go to another room to, dis to discuss that matter quietly. We also have returned to the archaic practice of writing letters and sending letters through snail mail instead of sending sensitive information through emails using uh, the computer. Uh, that's, that sounds a little strange as well, but uh, we had some information we wanted to relate to some family members and we didn't want it anyway to be, uh, for that information to be hijacked or uh, recorded uh, by anybody we didn't want it recorded by. So uh, we wrote letters and I'm sure we'll be doing more of that. It's just the times we live in, folks, and you need to, you need to be aware and conscious and, and to not put your head in the sand and say, oh, that couldn't be happening to me and it couldn't be happening in my own home. Uh, it sure can. And it doesn't need to, uh, to make us crazy. It just needs to, uh, to bring to our consciousness um, the fact of the times we live in. I hope this helps. And until next time, this is Cat's Cradle.